Here on the SARS COVID-19 Niagara update, we've been trying to keep you informed with information from the Niagara region's medical officer of health, Dr. Mustafa Hirji. He joins us again. The situation rapidly increased this week. I believe it was uh, Monday when we were still talking about, I believe, four cases at that time. And now we've more than doubled within five days. Is this a sign of the way things are going here in the Niagara region? After we record this, there's going to be very shortly the daily update of our case count, and it will actually be increasing to 12. Uh, in terms of what this means in terms of the rapidly increasing number, I think what you're seeing is a reflection of other countries around the world where people have traveled, seeing large increases in their case counts, and mostly we are seeing people who have traveled to those countries coming back home and having been exposed and being part of basically that international growing case count. Uh, ten of our cases have directly traveled themselves, in most cases actually to the United States, which is now the country most affected by COVID-19. As well, one additional case had indirect link to someone who in their family who had traveled as well. So 11 of our 12 cases are linked to travel. I think as people are continuing to have just come home from the March break, We'll continue for seeing for the next week at least people who may develop symptoms continue going testing and showing up as new cases. In the U.S., over 74,000 cases as of, I think, two days ago. Um, New York State, 210 deaths, over 26,000 cases. And Erie County, which is so close to Niagara, 166 confirmed cases. This is concerning for us here in Niagara, who you know, for many years have been freely traveling across that border and visiting Erie County. Absolutely. And, you know, more than even just people visiting Erie County or Niagara County, which borders us, there's also, of course, people who may live on our side of the border but cross over to work in the U.S. or people who live in the U.S. and cross over to the Canadian side and work here. And so it's definitely very concerning to us that the U.S. has a quite out of control outbreak at this point with New York State actually being the most heavily affected part of the United States. And as I highlighted, we're seeing most of our cases in Niagara are actually people who have traveled to the U.S. So that big U.S. outbreak is definitely spilling over and causing most of the cases we're seeing in Canada. You've been quite prophetic in saying that the New York State area and the United States as well was going to be hit very hard. Another thing that you are saying is that eventually, even though we haven't seen it yet in Niagara, we are going to see a community spread of the virus, as you've been mentioning this morning. We do now have the case that we are announcing today, which does not appear at this point to have a link to someone who has traveled. The investigation is ongoing, and certainly something may uh, be identified later. So we believe this is now likely our first case of someone who acquired it locally through their various uh, activities within Ontario. Not clear is necessarily exposed in Niagara, but certainly in Ontario. And this certainly, I think, is fitting that pattern of us heading towards starting to maybe have some local transmission. Why is that significant? It's significant mostly because I think it shows that the outbreak is progressing how we expect it would. Um, you know, we do our best to try and have anybody who's returning to Canada follow the federal and provincial guidelines to limit their travel, uh, sorry, to limit their exposure outside and self-isolate for 14 days. We know that doesn't always happen. Not everybody maybe sees that message. Perhaps there's some people who aren't as diligent about it as possible. And unfortunately, that is going to lead to some exposures of members out in the community. And because those people have not traveled, they may not realize that they are at risk when they develop symptoms. Absolutely important for anybody who has traveled outside of Canada to isolate themselves for 14 days upon returning home. If they develop symptoms during that time, absolutely important that they contact local public health or their health care provider. And they should also be aware that the federal government may be levying fines if someone is not following that advice. Thank you very much for today's update, Dr. Hirji. We know you're a very busy man.